Hey, Production Hub. Thanks, Bradford, for the introduction. Yes, this is Sneha Patel. I am talking to you from my own place because we're all working from home temporarily until things get back to normal. And I know that everyone's missing the trade show season and the film festivals and your chance to get your hands on some really cool new equipment to try out. And uh, we haven't been able to show off as much as we want the radiance lenses because the radiance lenses is something that Zeiss introduced this year. It's a new type of lens. It's actually a version of the Supreme Primes. So it's a Supreme Prime lens with a t special type of treatment coatings that gives it a special type of look. Now, why did we do this? Well, you know, in full frame cinematography, there's more limited choices of lenses to use because, you know, for Super 35, there's so much stuff out there like vintage lenses or stuff that, you know, you modify like uncoated lenses, things like that for over many decades uh, of, of choices of lenses to use to create special types of looks because in the digital age, it's more difficult than when we were using film a lot to create your own look based on the camera itself. You know, in film, you can bake in the look using the camera system, you know, the style that you're using, the kind of, um, you know, filtration you use, but specifically the film style and other things like that, the, the alchemy, the chemical processing that goes into the film stock really change the look of the film. Now, you can't do that quite so easily in digital. In digital, you have a very clean image uh, compared to film. And then, of course, you can process using LUTs, lookup tables, and filtration. But a lot of times, people are using lenses themselves with specific characteristics to give them an interesting look to kind of bake into the, you know, the design of the, the image. Because a cinematographer always is trying to make sure that whatever you see on screen is what they intended. And lenses help do that. Now, lenses with special looks can help a cinematographer tell a special a, a different type of story or specific type of storyline. And you know, if you're using you know, lens flare characteristics to help create tension or move the steroid along or use it for creative purposes, well, you don't have a lot of choices when it comes to full frame cinematography. Now, with the radiance lenses, you have the coverage uh, for full frame and full frame plus. So you can use this lens on the Alexa Mini, Alexa Mini, uh, sorry, the Mini LF the LF, the larger format, uh, large format Alexa, the big size camera, the mini LF. You can use this on the Sony Venice. You can use this on the Red Monstro. So there's a lot of different camera systems you can use this on. Uh, and of course, because it's full frame coverage, you get a nice larger image circle. You get the cleaner look that you expect um, that you were getting in Super 35. You're not gonna have a lot of fall off. If you use lenses that are meant for Super 35 on a full frame camera, you're not gonna get the same results. So this is a really good choice. Now, the difference is with the radiance lenses, it's all about the coating. So what do I mean about coatings? You know, what does that mean in the first place? What are coatings? Well, all lenses, especially in modern day, come with some type of coatings that are used in the different lens elements. So let's first take a look at a lens like this, a, a cutout, and you can see that there's many pieces of glass inside in this cutout. And these pieces of glass can have different types of coatings that are put on there to cut the amount of reflection. Now, the higher the power of the lens, the more anti-reflective coating protection it's gonna need. The lower the power of the lens, the less it's gonna need. But basically, it needs a formulation. Now, Zeiss has a type of coating that we call T-Star, which is a multi-layer coating that we use to cut back the reflection of light. And what that does is it stops stray light from going and bouncing around in glass elements inside the lens or on mechanical surfaces like the, the sides of the lens, of the barrel, and of course also the low pass filter because now all digital sensors have low pass filters and light bounces off of that as well. To cut all that light bouncing around, we use really dark matte black finish paint on the inside, and we use really good anti-reflective coatings. Now, what do anti-reflective coatings do? Well, they allow for the passage of good quality light. So you can see with this filter, and when I point it at the light source, you know, on one side you could see my finger, on the other side you can't because the side that doesn't have any anti-reflective coating is really bouncing back a lot of the light source back out again. And that's causing this kind of veiling effect that is obscuring my finger altogether. But on the side that has good anti-reflective coating, even when pointed directly at the light source, you can still clearly see my finger back there. And this is a good anti-reflective coating because very little of the light source is being bounced back at the light uh, or back out again. Um, 
This anterior reflective coating is called T-star. That's what Zeiss calls it. It's multi-layered, ergo the star. Uh, single T coating is what we used to use back in the day in the 1940s, but quickly by the 1950s we figured out that you need multi-layers of coating to really give you the good light transmission you want. The idea is you want all the spectrum of light to transmit through the lens and bounce back as little as possible. But because we have the fact, ability to use anti-reflective coatings like this, high quality coatings, we can mess with them as well. So what we did with the radiance lens is we mess with the coating and we formulate a coating that reflects back just a very small spectrum of blue light. It reflects that back a lot. And uh, just like the other T-Star coatings, it doesn't reflect the other light uh, back very much at all. In fact, you can see a very dim type of like magenta uh, look to it here that's being reflected. That actually matches what you see in the Supreme Prime. So if you wanted a nice clean look lens uh, that's reminiscent of Master Primes, you know, the successor to the Master Prime line, then of course you go for the regular Supreme Prime line. And the regular Supreme Prime, you're going to see very faint reflections coming back out from the lens. Very, very faint. Just a few percentage points of reflectivity. Now with the radiance lens, you're going to see a higher percentage of just the blue light reflecting back. And that is what causes the flare characteristics because now on certain lens elements that are inside, the blue light is bouncing around on other glass elements and other things inside the lens. And that is causing the flare characteristics that you see. Now before we had supercomputers, there's no way to emulate and create seven lenses because there are seven lenses in the set. There's a 21, there's a 25, 29, 35, 50, 85, and 100. Seven lenses out of the 14 that are going to be available for Supreme Primes. The radiants are a subset of seven. This subset of seven took a while to develop to make sure that the blue characteristics look very similar between all the different focal lengths of lenses and the flares, the way that they stack up, are very similar as well. There's some graphics here that I've provided Production Hub that are showing you exactly what this process looks like in the supercomputing uh, aspect of it. First, you have to figure out what kind of look you're looking for and narrow it down, and then you create create you know, these uh, renderings online, basically in the computer system, you're rendering these flare characteristics and then choosing what you like and narrowing it down and then using that anti-reflective coding formulation uh, on these different lens elements and then building a prototype. Now if we had just gone straight to just building prototypes, we'd have built hundreds and thousands of prototypes and probably lost funding for the project. But because we were able to, on a supercomputer, figure it out, the end result is very similar to the rendering of the blue fair characteristics that you see that were rendered in the computer months later when you create the prototypes and we tested them, you can see that the flare characteristics look very similar to what was designed. And that's exactly what we're trying to do in the radiance lenses is create these characteristics that cinematographers can use. And again, you have multiple choices. If you want a clean look, you go for the Supreme Primes. And there's many focal lengths available, including a 135 and 150 as well. And on the, on the wide end, we right now have a 21, but a 15 and 18 will soon be um, introduced as well. So there's a lot of choices for focal lengths on the Supreme Primes. On the radiant side, you're a little bit more limited, uh, 21 through 100, but you have a great set here. They're denoted by a gold ring and also says radiance at the top. That's how you tell the difference between this lens and its Supreme Prime cousin because they're really similar except for the coating treatment. Um, and then this is available right now. Cost is very similar between the two, but you got a you know the choice between a nice, interesting look with blue flare characteristics or a cleaner look, more reminiscent of Master Prime with the regular Supreme Primes. And of course, you can match up with our CZ2 zooms, our cinema zooms like the 70 to 200 you see here, matches quite well with either the Supremes or the Supreme Prime radiance. It's also full frame, not full frame plus, but it does have full frame coverage. So we'll again work with the Alexa Mini LF, the Alexa LF Monstro and the Sony Venice and other camera systems as well. So if you want more information about any of these lenses that are mentioned here, go to zeiss.com forward slash cine. And if you want to learn more about how the Radiance lenses were developed, or you want to listen to conversations that we're having right now during the pandemic with cinematographers uh, like Maddie Libatique, Dana Gonzalez, uh, Ava Burkowski, and others, please go to Zeiss Lenses America's YouTube page and you're going to see all kinds of information there, le learn from home, and then also conversations that we're having with photographers and cinematographers. So take a look and if you have any questions, please reach out to us and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you very much.